Welcome to Animal Zone, where we will share what everyone from psychologists to cardiologists agree on, that having a pet can change and even save your life. Whether it be a cat, a dog, a bird, or even a tortoise, having a pet in your life may be one of the most rewarding things you can do for yourself and for the pet. Today we'll be talking with Sally Jordan of the renowned Jordan Wines, who rescues dogs who often whine until they meet Sally. After that, we'll be with Isabel Gulo inside the Care for Paws Mobile Veterinary Clinic. Later on, we'll be going to Rescue Cats, where Executive Director Jeffney Telson is going to give us an amazing tour of their facility with an emphasis on maize. And then New York Times best-selling author and dog trainer for Oprah, Tamar Geller, is going to share some insights about how she trains dogs. So cuddle up with your favorite critter and join us as we go into the Animal Zone. Oh, who's this old guy? Oh, that's Cooper. He's seen a few of these. Most people like to adopt the younger dogs, but one day your time will come, huh, Cooper? Aww. Sweetheart, what about those puppies? Aww. Honey puppies. <laughs> Mommy, Daddy, that's it, that's the one. The Coldwell Banker Homes for Dogs Project has helped find homes for thousands of shelter dogs. How's your tea? Because our agents don't just understand real estate, they understand what home is all about. Today we're at the home of Sally Jordan. Sally is part of the founding family of the Jordan Winery, one of the great California wines. And she also happens to adopt dogs. So let's go in and say hi to Sally. And so here we are with Sally Jordan. Sally, thank you for having us. Well, it's my pleasure. I'm delighted you're here. Your home is so beautiful, and uh, we love your wine. But you know what? I know you have a lot of adopted dogs, and they don't whine. They're happy being here because you've been an adopting parent of animals for all your life, right? All my life. All my life. So how did it start? Well, I think it began when I was three or four, and uh, a stray, hungry, homeless dog came along, and. Uh, I adopted him, he was a spaniel type, and then a stray cat came along, a gray tabby, tiger, and adopted him, and one cat led to another, and another dog, and pretty soon I, I had lizards, and I had an alligator that was given to me by my dental hygienist. <laughs> wait, 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 an alligator? How a big? A baby alligator. I went in to have my teeth checked, and she had it on a little chain, the little gold collar on her shirt, her uniform. Like a Lacoste shirt. Exactly, exactly <laughs> like yours, only it was alive and crawling around. And I was fascinated. And she said, yes, it's a baby alligator. My boyfriend in Florida sent it to me. Would you like to have it? I said, oh, I would love to have it. So she took a pin, put it on my little shirt, and my mother picked me up after I'd had my dental appointment. I got in the car and I said, look, mommy, I have an alligator. And she drove up on the sidewalk. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly killed a person. <laughs> How long did you have the alligator? Oh, we had Allie for some time because Allie lived in a terrarium and then outgrew the terrarium. And then we put him in a horse trough that we had in the basement and Allie grew and grew and pretty soon we decided, or mother decided, that his jaws were too big and just right for my finger and so perhaps we should give Allie to the zoo. So they had a junior alligator exhibit at the Des Moines, Iowa Zoo and in went Allie. Ooh. Made new friends. Wow. So what is this adoption gene? Is it just that you love animals that are out on the streets? Well, <laughs> they're so needy and they're they're so grateful. They're so full of joy and relief when you bring them into your home. And uh, I have always felt that 
old damaged dogs appreciate from the bottom of their little dog hearts having another chance at life, a good life. Two meals a day, a warm blanket, a comfy bed to sleep in, a loving hand. And when you first get these dogs and you want to pat them, they cower. It makes, it makes me want to cry because they cower. A hand over them always meant a beating. And so it takes several months really to get them to understand that you're not going to strike them in malice. You're going to love them. So you always pet them on the neck, the throat, and the tummy until they get used to your hand. And you've always adopted animals that are the, the least likely to be adopted from these shelters. And that's, you could have any breed, you could have any animal. Do you like mixed breeds more than uh, purebred? Yes, I do. I think they're sturdier. I think they're healthier, Arthur. I think they're smarter. And I think they have more common sense than a purebred. I've always preferred the mixed dog and I've always preferred an old damaged dog because that dog has been around the block and they really deserve to have a nice few years at the end of their life in comfort and relief and release from anxiety. You've had a pit bull that was three-legged. I mean that's, that's two strikes. Pit bulls are, tend to not to be that desirable by the adoption world and, and an injured pit bull is even harder. That's what I thought too. Yeah? And, and that was the reason I adopted Tripod. <laughs> Great name. <laughs> and he is. He was a, a three-legged pit bull. He lived to a ripe old age. One of the best, most even-tempered, sweetest dogs I've ever owned. Wow. I mean, they're, they're, as you said, they're so appreciative. And uh, a, a pit bull is one of the most loving dogs, so misunderstood out there in the uh, in the world because yes. people say they're vi violent or, or vicious and they're not at all. No. They only want to please uh, their caretakers, their, their parents. They're wonderful dogs, wonderful breed, yeah. just as you say. So now you have a couple of dogs right now that you've uh, adopted that are I, here? I have uh, four right now. I have two German Shepherd mixes and I have two of questionable descent <laughs> ancestry uh -huh. and um, so I have four right now. Your son is also uh, a, a lover of animals and adopts yes. animals. Tell me a little bit about him. This is a picture of, um, of my son John's dogs. He has three Labrador mixes. This is a book called Wine Dogs of California <laughs> and the centerfold or are these three, Rosie and Nimitz and Blitz, and they are the wine dogs at a Jordan Winery. That's great, and are they, I mean, they were adopted from a shelter in the area? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's the thing, a lot of, there's a lot of wonderful shelters all throughout California. There are. And if you can find the, a local shelter, then, uh, then you can probably help some animals find a there good There are life. many, many good shelters. Yeah. So when you have adopted dogs, do you find that they influence one another or are they individuals? A little of both. Yeah. They maintain their individuality, but then they become a family. I guess they call it a pack. But they're so individual and they maintain that um, privacy. They don't allow the other dog to bully them. They know they have to get along. Somehow, instinctively, these dogs know they have to get along to be here. And I do not know how they know that. And of course, the dogs that get to come here at Sally's place probably get extra treats, right? Like a little taste of wine once in a while? Actually, these are whining dogs. They're not wine dogs. They don't drink wine. But I think they would be well affected. I think it would be a good health food for them. I'm so glad you suggested it, Nipper. I think it's a you're, good idea. You're the best thing for these dogs, and I, <laughs> I toast to you, Sally, for thank being you. such a great adopter. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And thanks. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we got more here on Animal Zone. Stay tuned. 
The Santa Barbara Humane Society is an independent, local, community-based nonprofit with adoptable animals ready to find a forever home today. The Santa Barbara Humane Society offers low-cost spay and neuter and vaccinations to cats and dogs in our community. And Dr. Sisk is our veterinarian who performs those surgeries and helps with the vaccinations. Also, please have a relationship with your local veterinarian in case of an emergency. Visit sbhumanesociety.org and remember... At the Santa Barbara Humane Society, we want you to adopt, not shop. Sometimes scary things happen, like fires and floods, and suddenly a family has lost everything. That's why the Unity Shop has a disaster assistance program. We help families with immediate needs like food, clothing, and household items, and we continue to help them long-term until they're back on their feet and in their homes. But it takes a whole community to make this possible. Please, donate today so we can help everyone who needs us. Find out how you can help at unityshop.org. Thank you for joining us. Let's head back into the Animal Zone. Well, you might think this is an RV. Well, it's not quite an RV. This is a mobile pet clinic that belongs to Care for Paws. And uh, we're going to see what kind of animals they're helping. And oh, there's a handsome animal. What's this guy's name? This is Oliver. Hey, Oliver, you're beautiful. A little bit of uh, maybe Pitbull? Yeah, Pitbull, Great Dane. And Great Dane? Well, let's all go in and check it out. Perfect. All right, come on. Come on, Oliver. We're going to see what's happening here. And we're here with Isabel Gulo, who is the executive director of Care for Paws, inside their mobile veterinarian clinic. This is amazing. Is this the first of its kind here? It is. It's the first mobile veterinary clinic in Santa Barbara County, or even on the Central Coast, to help low-income, senior, disabled, and homeless pet owners. So, and you're all over town, so people can come uh, to you at certain locations and bring their pets? Yes, we're actually all over the county, from all the way from Carpinteria up to Guadalupe and even New Cuyama. So we cover the whole county. Wow. And uh, if people, can they, I mean, they can't afford to do pet care, but they may want to make a donation. Is that, is that something that happens? People yeah, help people you out? can donate or contribute towards services. Um, our spay neuter services are free, and our veterinary intervention program, where we can provide a range of different services, is either for a donation or, or free if a pet owner can't afford it. Wow, that's amazing. How many vets do you have working for you? We have two veterinarians working in the mobile clinic, and we run it three to four days a week. Uh huh. And, uh, and you're helping, I'm sure, a lot of adopted animals, a lot of orphaned animals that have been uh, made maybe uh, homed by some well-loving people, but maybe, you know, the vet bills get expensive, don't they? Yeah, veterinarian costs can be really expensive, and so we step in to make sure that these animals don't have to be relinquished to a shelter or to another family so that they can really stay with their pet owners for life. What are some of the different kinds of uh, operations and things you've done besides spay and neutering? We do a lot of dentals because that's a costly procedure that also um, when you perform the dentals, you know you're prolonging the pet's life. Really? And, How often do you have to do a dental? Is this like a cleaning, like going to um, the dentist? We can do extractions, so we pull out a lot of teeth or we clean whatever we need to do. You probably want to do it every couple of years or so. Really? And now wait, I got to ask you, because uh, a little, you know, a little disclosure here. I adopted Mikey through Isabel, and, uh, and I have never brushed his teeth. Is that something I should have been doing? Well, you can give him chew bones. If it's, some some dogs just have good teeth, and yeah. some don't. Like traditionally, like small breed dogs, like Chihuahuas, might have poor dental hygiene, and so you have to give them dentals more off frequently. But do those little greenies, do those things work? That they I chew? think they do. Yeah. So Care for Paws uh, also has a fabulous event called Wags and Whiskers, which happens every year, a festival in uh, City College. And does that event help raise funds for uh, for this organization? It does. It raises good funds for all of our programs, uh, mobile clinic included. And plus, it creates awareness about not just the work that Care for Paws does in the community, but all the other rescue groups. Uh, shelters, nonprofit organizations, and even local businesses that want to help animals and make life better for them in our community. You just mentioned that uh, you needed a generator. What happened? So the genera get, generator gave out. This is, um, it's not a brand new clinic, and so we're already putting a lot of hours on the generator that we had. So it collapsed, and a new one is $7,000. Wow. And you raised some money, and, and then did, did someone come in and help you? We just had this amazing offer from Santa Barbara Humane Society. Uh, they're a long-time supporter of Care for Paws, and they said that they want to help us uh, purchase the new generator. So we're so grateful. Wow. 
And, and on a day like today when it's really hot outside, those generators oh, are really yes. appreciated, aren't they? <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, so, Isabel, you, you guys do so much good work in this community and for all our animals here. So thank you. Thank uh, you. For all of us. And uh, we're going to take a break and we'll be right back here on Animal Zone. The Santa Barbara County Animal Care Foundation is dedicated to saving animals' lives, but we need your help to continue this critical work. SBCACF provides year-round medical and surgical care so that abandoned, homeless, or abused animals receive the best second chance of finding a loving home. No animal is turned away from surgical care. To learn more and assist us in keeping that pledge, visit sbcanimalcare.org and make a donation today. If they can be saved, we want to save them. Stephanie, welcome to Animal Zone, and thank you for bringing us to Rescue Cats. What is Rescue Cats all about? Uh, Rescue Cats was established 21 years ago, and uh, we want it to be a little bit different than the other organizations, so we are dedicated to taking in stray and abandoned cats and kittens, getting them healthy, and finding um, homes for them. And to date, we're getting close to 3,000. Wow, that's a lot. It is a lot. And, you know, I mean, cats are territorial. How do you get them all to be together in one, under one roof? Well, that doesn't always work. As we go in and you see a little bit more about rescue cats, you will see that there are areas that are for cats that do get along, and then we have areas for other resident cats that need to be by themselves, and then we have separate enclosures for those that uh, are go going to be up for adoption. How does someone get in touch and find a cat to adopt? Can they spend time at Rescue Cats? If it is a special case, then we do let them spend time at Rescue Cats. I changed the way that I do things about six years ago. Uh, adoptions here on the premises were taking 20 to 30 hours a week for me to do, and I could better serve the animals if I turned over the adoption process to trained people to handle, and we do that at the Montecito Pet Shop. That gave me an extra 20 to 30 hours a week to uh, rescue animals and be able to take care of them. So that's worked a lot better, and it's a bigger benefit for the cats. How do your cats come here? Are they, are they delivered by people who are relinquishing cats or are they ones that are found? It's usually ones that are found. Rarely do we take relinquished cats, but they're usually little stray kitties that are out underneath the barn or a wood pile or a stray mom that's pregnant. Uh, we also work with some other organizations and we pull from high kill shelters. Uh, usually they're down south, so if we have a, a cat that's pregnant and it's scheduled for euthanasia at a high kill shelter, if we have the room and the space, then we take them in and let them have their babies and um, then find homes for all of them. Yeah, I mean, cats also, when they get older, have a lot of veterinarian issues. Uh, they have to have medical problems. Some of them get diseases and kidney problems. How do you deal with all that here? Well, if they come in to rescue cats and for any reason they are not adoptable, they're too old, they're too feral, too shy, have too many health issues, then they stay. We are truly a no-kill shelter, so you will see kitties here that have chronic pancreatitis, hyperthyroidism. In the years that I've been doing this, we've had three cats that came in at 17 years old, and uh, all of them have lived to be early 20s. Uh, so I don't believe in euthanizing them just because they have some sort of an issue, because to me, every life is precious. And I have the luxury of being able to say no when I don't have enough room, whereas county animal shelters don't have that luxury. They have to take in everything. Now, you don't often think shelters will have cats who want to come into the shelter, but you had one cat who kept coming back. <laughs> I, I did. I had a, a, a stray cat, Houdini, who walked by and I guess he looked at it and thought, well, that might be a great place to get a meal. And he broke into one of the outdoor enclosures. He found his way through one of the overhead tunnels and into the back of the cattery. So I went in one day and saw this black and white cat and I thought, well, that's not one of mine. And he was eating. And we called him Houdini because he kept going in and out and we couldn't figure out how he was getting out. Uh, I would come out and I would find the resident cats that are supposed to be enclosed in my driveway or in the backyard. So we finally figured out how he was doing it. We revamped some of the outdoor enclosures so that he could not escape. 
and it was two years before he would ever allow me to pet him. It took him nine months to find his way from the back of the cattery to the front part where all the beds and the baskets and the condos are, and two years before he would let me pet him. And he, he was here probably six or seven years before he passed. Well, I think that is fascinating information. I think it's time to go inside and take a look at the cats up close and personal. Okay. So let's go check it okay. out. Okay. Well, this gives new meaning to a cat house because you've got all these great rooms. Look, everyone's numbered and each cat has its own little enclosure and climbing posts. Uh, it's pretty great. Well, I think uh, that's one of the reasons that people like it here uh -huh. uh, is because the rooms are powder size, bathroom powder size. Uh, there's not little bitty metal cages. And so the, the kitties don't feel that confined. They have room to romp and play and do all the things that kittens do. Speaking of kittens, who's this? This is Mocha. She is a little runt of a litter, and so we have let her stay with her mom so that they can uh, take care of each other, and hopefully we'll get them adopted together whenever the time is right. It's all right, little now, Mocha. Now, you know, kittens like to play a lot, but they also like to scratch a lot. How do you protect your hands? I mean, you don't look like they're too damaged. We keep their nails trimmed. They get pedicures. They do? <laughs> yes, okay. they that's, get pedicures. That's a secret, huh? <laughs> yeah. And uh, I mean, w when they start biting, do you tell them no? Do we they understand? Do because in that you see that a lot in single babies uh, because they don't learn the social skills from the other litter mates. So when we have a single bottle fed baby, if there's any way that we can put it with another kitten about that age, then they teach other, each other about how to play. And if we can't do that, then we have to teach them. And we do a loud no and take away our hands and make sure that we replace it with a toy. And they really do learn. We've had a couple of young mothers that uh, did the love bite thing, and that is a deterrent from getting them adopted. So we've learned ways to uh, retrain them, so to speak. Oh. So do you think cats actually understand words when we start talking to them? I mean, dogs seem to have a certain vocabulary they, they pick up. What about cats? I, I think they do. I think that every animal understands a gentle touch, um, a gentleness in your voice. They may not understand the word, but they understand the tone. Uh, and I think that they they feel your energy. Uh, I mean, there is nothing better than when you've had a stressful day to go in and sit with the kitty and just <sighs> breathe. And of course they feel that. That's, that's an energy that you're giving to them and they in turn give you back so much more. They sure do. They have the greatest gifts in life. And, yep. uh, there, you have got so many of them here. It's wonderful rescue cats to come and see them all, and hopefully they'll find great homes. They will. I make sure of that. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about this amazing maze you have here. Well, I believe in indoor cats uh, because of all the predators and things that kitties can get in trouble with, uh, and I needed to have a way that my cats and the resident cats that live here could stay safe but still have the experience of the outdoors. So we built one overhead trail, that led to a huge outdoor enclosure. And we discovered that the cats didn't use the outdoor enclosure as much as they stopped up the overhead trail. So we went back and we built more overhead trails that all connect to outdoor enclosures. So they can be outside, they can experience, you know, the wind, the bugs, the birds, all that kind of thing, but still be safe from predators. Because we do have coyotes, we have a busy street, so it is our way of giving them the best experience of both worlds. Well, I can see why cats have nine lives, but they probably want to keep coming back here to rescue cats yeah. on each one. <laughs> well, they'll have to get in line because there is a line. <laughs> Debbie, thanks so much for having us here today. Thank it's you. just great. We'll hope to have you back on Animal Zone soon. I hope so too. Okay, we're going to take you. a break and we'll be right back. Hey, take a look at these loving animals that you can adopt today, and don't worry. If someone beats you to the shelter, there are plenty more wonderful animals ready to find you and their forever home.
Welcome back to Animal Zone. I'm with Tamar Geller, the author of The Love Dog, and uh, also an amazing behavioralist uh, who trains dogs and the parents. Yes, the dog's parents. And you've had a lot of great celebrity uh, uh, parents that you've dealt with over the years, and it's amazing when you bring someone of that stature down to the reality of dealing with a dog, because we all have to deal with dogs on the same level, right? But I do not believe it's bringing them down to that level of dogs. I believe in them, bringing them up to the level of dogs. Okay. Because what it is, dog sees us as who we are. And who we are truly on the inside is way bigger than our bank accounts or our accomplishments, all of that. And I think that's why everybody loves dogs because they are the real thing. I mean, dogs don't care if you gained weight, if you lost weight, if your show is doing good or bad. If You know, dogs truly, truly, truly love us. That's why I think love is higher and bringing everybody high to the level of dogs. Now, there are certain rules with Rover uh, that we all have to think about. Like, for example, some people won't let a dog sit on a couch. Yes. Uh, but look at Cricket. I mean, Cricket just looks like she belongs on this couch. Yes. How do you decide what rules are good for you and what aren't and how you should enforce them? You gotta look at dogs at the way you raise your kids. Everybody have their own rules, and as long as they're within the law, you can do whatever you want with the dog. So a lot of people are calling me and they're like, Tama, I'm so embarrassed, but my dog is sleeping in bed with me. I know you will be upset. And I'm like, why would I be upset that your dog is sleeping in bed with you? This is your life. Do you want your dog in bed with you? That's okay. The question is, do you always want your dog in bed with you? Because if not, then teach your dog not to be in bed with you. And when you invite them, then they come up. Like somebody very famous wanted the dogs to jump on her when excitement when they come in. And I said to her, I cannot let you do that because you're so famous, people may try to sue you if your dog jump on them. And we're in a litigious society. So sometimes I have to protect my celebrity clients, you know? And I said, how about they don't jump on anybody, but if you say hug, that's when they come and jump on you. That works. So what it is, is we have to find a way that works for you within the society that we live in, but you want to feed your dog from your fork, feed your dog from the fork. Whatever works for you, as long as they're not gonna try to take it from other people's forks. You see what I'm saying? I, I follow you. You know, there seems to be a nice uh, evolution taking place in America where now we're starting to see restaurants that allow you to bring your dog in there. They don't have to just be service dogs to be able to come into a restaurant or feed on the patio. Uh, there are many more hotels now that accept uh, dogs. What's it like to travel with dogs? You do a lot of traveling. Well, I think it's incredible to go to places with dogs and the first thing that you want to teach a dog is not to be triggered not to be triggered by chairs moving, by things falling, by dogs walking around them. The first thing you need to teach them is how to ignore it. Meaning we all, God, if we will learn as young children how to ignore things that trigger us, like the next Cinnabon, after I just had seven of them, <laughs> or if somebody is criticizing me unfairly not to react, or all these things, if we were taught at a very young age, here's the trigger, I'm gonna look at mom. I'm gonna look at that because they got me. So that's the first thing that I teach dogs, how not to be triggered. Because if they're not triggered, you can take them places. Tamar, yes. so great to see you. Thank so you for being on. Pleasure being uh, here, okay. so much fun. We'll be right back after this. Every morning you could count on it being there with the rise of the sun. We're proud to say we've been there every day with you. The Santa Barbara News Press plans to continue sharing the news of the day with you all through the year and beyond. It's nice to know there are some things you can still count on. The Santa Barbara News Press, serving Santa Barbara since 1855. Subscribe today. Call 1-800-654-3292. Thank you for watching Animal Zone. When it comes to animal rescue, you are the heroes that make all the difference. To find out how you can safely and simply adopt an animal, please visit AnimalZone.org. See you next time. Never was a friend so true. Never was a friend like you. Canine, you're my best friend. Canine of mine, friend for all time. So glad you're my best friend Through thick and thin We'll see things
rings through Canine of mine so true Did I find you or did you find me? Either way it's still serendipity When I saw you it was plain to see You weren't just another lassie wanna be oh canine of mine Friend for all time I'm so glad you're my best friend.